Hi, my name is Charles Knight, President and Founder of Healthcraft Corporation. You know, not too long ago, we started our company in the garage you see right across the street here. So, you know, who says the American opportunity is dead? Today, we're in 36 states in Canada, and we're a multi-million dollar corporation. And the interesting thing about our products is they're all American made. Now, that's Americans' jobs for America's future. Now, we're going to show you how to use your new cookware today, so let's go inside and take a look at it. Welcome to our home. When you first receive your Healthcraft waterless and greaseless cookware, you'll notice it'll be in a big box like this. Now, you might receive one, two, or three boxes depending on what you purchase. For example, a Chef Tell Total Kitchen comes in three boxes with the kitchen helpers. Now, these boxes are a little bit heavy, so you might need a little bit of help moving it around. And I open mine on the floor like you see here, so it's easy to get things in and out. When you first open the box, you'll notice you'll find some cleaner, the videotape you're now watching, and a recipe and instruction book. Now, what you want to do is finish watching the tape, read through the first 14 pages of the book, and then you're ready to go. Inside the large box, you'll find smaller boxes. This is the number one basic set. Every one of the sets has its own box, as well as the kitchen helpers. Now, we're going to take this over the sink and clean it right now, and then we'll show you how to cook with it. Now that I've got my coat and tie off, let me show you how to clean Healthcraft cook with the first time. In the recipe and instruction book, it'll tell you everything you need to know on page three and four, but let me show you. Healthcraft is made out of a T304S band titanium surgical steel with nichromium. It's beautiful when it comes out of the box, isn't it? But it still has machine oils and polishing compounds on it. So it's very important that you wash it properly the first time. I filled up a basin with warm soapy water. To that, I'm going to add two cups of white distilled vinegar and I'm going to let every piece soak for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then all you have to do is rinse it with hot water, let it drain, dry it with a paper towel or dish rag, and you're ready to go. Now, if you get any blue or brown stains on the cookware the first time you use it, all that means is that you've got some of the machine oils and polishing compounds burned on the pan. Don't get excited. What you use is some of that barkeeper's friend, the sample we had in there, put it on the pan, dry, go around with a paper towel or a damp rag, and that'll take the blue or brown stains off. Now, make sure you stop down the store and pick up some Cami or Barkeeper's Friend, because that'll help you keep the pans nice and clean. Once you've got them dry, you're ready to cook. Let's go. This is Healthcraft. The company that makes this for us has been making cookware since the early part of the century. Healthcraft cookware is guaranteed in writing not to warp, buckle, bend, pit, chip, corrode, or wear out. Anything happens to it, replace it absolutely free. You see, what we did is we took the old heavy cast aluminum pan, the best cooking pan you can buy. We wrapped it in a new space age heat conducting core, so it cooks from the bottom up, the sides, and then the top down. Then we wrapped it again in surgical steel. Five plies of metal bonded together so it heats evenly, retains its heat. Surgical steel inside and out, so you never have to use Brillo. Hot soapy water in the dish rag will get it clean. And it's not one of those phony slab bottom pans. As you can see, it's five ply all the way through. And look at this, self-storing covers so you don't have to go on a treasure hunt looking for your lids. All your lids fit right inside. You can hang the entire set up or you can stack it up in one or two neat piles. When you're ready to cook, you just flip your lid. All your handles and tops come off for easy cleaning. No screws, rivets, and weld marks on the inside to collect last week's stew. You ever reach down on a hot pan without thinking, burn your fingers? We put a nice high wide disc on here to protect them. We even put brass furrows and expansion rings inside the tops. That's so your lids don't strip on you. See, we don't want your lids stripping in front of your kids anyway. See, you'll get these jokes tomorrow, right? Safety grip panels on both sides, not one long handle. You gotta lug around the kitchen with dresses, potholders, and aprons, but two handles on every single pan. So whether you're left-handed, right-handed, or both-handed, it's easy to hold. And look at this. Flame guards on every single handle protect your handles. So even when the pans are very hot on top of the stove, you don't need dresses and potholders and aprons to lug them around the kitchen. And these handles will go in the oven up to 450 degrees. The dishwasher, they're perfectly safe. Three turns of the screw, the handle comes off for easy cleaning replacement. The name, address, zip code, and phone number is right on the side of the pan, so you always know where you are. Now, if you ever break a top or a handle, all you do is call the number here or refer to your recipe and instruction book, and they'll tell you how to get a new handle absolutely free. The only thing you pay for ever is shipping. There's many great features with Healthcraft cookware, but the most important feature is the vapor vent. Now, don't be fooled by imitations of lookalikes. Make sure you look for the vent and the arrow. You know you've got the right cookware. The way it works is simple. Here you can see the arrow. When the vent is faced towards the arrow, that means the vent is open. 
When you turn the vent away from the arrow, that means it's closed. Now here's something you can remember if you never pick up the recipe and instruction book. Anytime you're going to cook chicken, steaks, chops, or eggs, you always cook on a medium or medium-high flame. Anytime you cook soup, stew, spaghetti sauce, cook on a low flame. They are cooked with the vent open. Everything else, the vent is closed. Chicken, steaks, and chops are cooked on a medium flame. Everything else is cooked on low. Healthcraft cookware is divided into five sets of cookware. There's no duplication, so you can build a collection any way you want. This is the number one, the basic set. And the basic set includes the one quart saucepan and cover. This is perfect if you cook for one or two. You can cook three or four different vegetables in the same pan at the same time. And then if you cook for four, five, or six, this will hold two eight ounce packages of frozen peas, carrots, corn, or broccoli. This is the two quart. This will hold a half a head of cabbage, a whole head of broccoli or cauliflower. When I first got married, my wife cooked spaghetti sauce here and spaghetti in the three quart from the number three set. This here is a covered saute skillet. Now like all of our cookware, you can change the handles if you like. I happen to like two side handles, but you can take this off and screw a long handle on so you can put a long handle on this particular piece. We use this for sauteing mushrooms and onions, and the nice thing about it, it's a covered saute skillet. A lot of saute skillets are not covered today. This is also good for small quantities of meat. You can use it for chicken, steaks, chops, burgers. Right? This here is your double boiler. You notice it's three tiered. It fits into three different pans. It fits in the two quart here from the number one set, and it also fits in the, in the three quart from the number three set and the four quart from the number five set. That's all in your recipe and instruction book. But this is good for things you can't put on direct flames like puddings, icings, warming up leftovers. Now, let's say you cook for one or two. You're not going to cook a whole roast in the oven, but would you cook a Cornish hen or a London broil or a small roast beef on top of the stove? You can do that simply by inverting the two quart upside down on top of the saute skillet. You can also stack cook. Put another vegetable in here with the vent closed on a low flame. When the top is hot to touch, you can stack it. That entire meal will cook in 50 minutes, 10 minutes less than an hour. Now, I can go on and on with this particular collection, but let's go to the number two. This is the number two roast and broil set. The nice thing about this set, you get a lot of different cooking combinations. For example, this is the large deep conventional skillet. Nobody makes a deep conventional skillet like this. And this right here, this is your six and a half quart roaster bottom. Here is the four and a half quart roaster top. Now you can use this as a deep skillet and this is a deep skillet. So if you're cooking a whole bunch of extra chicken that night, you can do that too. You can use the high dome cover on top of here as a chicken roaster. Roast the whole chicken on top of the stove in 35 to 40 minutes. Invert it, you've got a Dutch oven for corned beef and cabbage. See, with Healthcraft, because of the five-ply construction, even through some of the lids, you can cook either way. It doesn't make any difference. You can also use it over here and do up to about a 15-pound standing rib roast. All your lids are interchangeable. For example, here's a good cooking combination. Take a large roast, preheat the pan, drop the roast in the pan, and brown it on all sides. Take three stalks of celery, one onion, cut it up on the kitchen machine, lay it around the roast, that'll form your condiment gravy and flavoring. Then put your whole potatoes and carrots around the roast. This is a utility rack, steamer rack, the most important part of the set. With this you get all your different cooking combinations. Place that on top of the six and a half quart. Now this here is the double boiler for the number one set that I've shown you before. You can use this for your favorite cake mix or cornbread. Put your cake mix or cornbread in here, cover it, you cook a roast, potatoes, carrots, condiment and gravy cake all in one pan. And you're not done yet. You can put corn in the cob in here, put it on a low flame with the vent closed. When the top is hot to touch, you can stack it. That entire meal cooks in 50 minutes, 10 minutes less than an hour. Medium rare. Not a pot roast, but a roast beef. Now this set of cook will do over 40 different cooking combinations for you. So no matter what you cook, you can cook it in Healthcraft. Here's another good one for you. Put a meatloaf in here. Put your rack on. Lay corn in the cob across the top. Put your high dome cover on it, cook the entire meal on top of the stove that'll cook in 30 to 40 minutes. Healthcraft cooker is unique and different. With this set of cooker, you get many cooking combinations. We'll see you with the next set in just a minute. This is the number three completer set. Now this set is basically designed to complete the number one set and use in conjunction with that particular set. For example, you get the three quart and cover. This is used for soup, stew, spaghetti sauce, all your big cooking. This is a steamer strainer for steaming clams, snail shrimp, warming up leftovers, baby foods. And you get your egg poacher for poaching eggs, bacon, biscuits, and muffins. Dr. Lyndon Smith, the famous babier doctor, is one of our customers, and he'll tell you that poached eggs 
are the healthiest to cook and the easiest to digest, so poached eggs are back. We're going to use this as a steamer rack. Put a ham roast in here with sweet potatoes and pearl onions. Apples in here with the cinnamon stick stuck through the apple. Use your two quart as a high dome cover from the number one set. There's a small roaster. That entire meal cooks on top of the stove in just 30 minutes. One set of cooker will give you many cooking combinations. You can also use the steamer strainer in conjunction with the three quart for fancy recipes. For example, put uh, a little red wine in here. Put artichokes and lobster tails here. Cover it, open the vent. That'll cook in about 15, 20 minutes on top of the stove. When you're finished, you just take a little bit of cornstarch, uh, a little bit of sherry, mix that together, dip your artichokes and lobster in there. You think you died and went to heaven. It's so good. All right, stay tuned. We're going to show you the number four set next. This is the number four gourmet set. Now, this is designed and engineered by world-famous Chef Tell. You've probably seen him on PM Magazine and Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous and Regis and Kathy Lee. This is a small seven-inch gourmet skillet. Now, every pan has a purpose, and there's a purpose for every pan. This pan has a very distinct purpose. It's for making those eggs. You ever see the eggs when you go to the breakfast restaurants? They have two or three eggs, and they're perfectly round. You ever wonder how they do that? Scissors. No. What they do is they use a gourmet pan about this size. Now, the key to good eggs is very simple. Just put it on a medium-high flame. Put a little bit of oil in the pan, because eggs don't have their own natural lubricant. Take a paper towel and wipe the oil all around the pan. When the pan gets good and hot, crack your eggs on a flat surface, put two or three eggs in here. In a minute or two, you know they'll start to move around as you move the pan. And when you're ready, just push them like you see here. That'll flip. The first time you try that, do it over the sink. This is the 10-inch gourmet skillet or omelet pan. Now, we're going to show you how to make omelets in this. Now, contrary to popular belief, you do not uh, flip omelets or turn them with a spatula. You actually push them. You see, it's very simple and easy to use. Of course, you can use this for other things. This is good for small quantities of stir-fried vegetables and Chinese dishes and things of that nature. Right here is the chef's pan. This is a full 13 inches, the largest pan in the industry. This is great for pasta primavera, seafood allegrex, southern fried chicken, stir-fried vegetables, all your big cooking. I like to use this in, uh, when we go camping. And over here, my favorite pan, the dessert pan. This is the flambe pan, the one you do all your flaming desserts with. Now, I like to use it as a breakfast skillet. Matter of fact, the other day, my, my young daughter had a bunch of kids over for a uh, pajama party, and we did pancakes in the morning. It's just perfect for that. Heats evenly, retains its heat. And you can also use it for baking on top of the stove. We've done a pizza in this. Uh, we've done other things like uh, a pineapple upside down cake. There's a lot of fun you can have with our cookware. So that's your large 14-inch flambe pan. Don't go away, I'm going to show you the number five set next. This is the number five commercial set. These are all the big pans. You get your 12 quart master roaster, your seven quart, that's the tall seven quart, with the new deep spaghetti cooker and deep fryer, and you also get your four and a half quart junior roaster. You know the nice thing about these big pans? You can do 12 quarts of spaghetti sauce on one burner, and you can fry the paste, cook the meat, and everything else. Matter of fact, my wife's Italian. We cook 12 quarts of spaghetti sauce every single Sunday, whether we need it or not. She'll do the meat in here, fry the paste, put all the ingredients in the pan, put it on simmer, open the vent, and the spaghetti sauce cooks till we come home from church. The most delicious spaghetti sauce you ever had in your life. Because the pans are five-ply, not only across the bottom and up the sides, you don't have to stand there and stir and mix all day. This is the new seven quart. This is brand new. It also comes with the new seven quart steamer strainer. Now this fits down inside as a spaghetti cooker. Put a little bit of water in here, put your spaghetti in, cover it, open the vent, the spaghetti will cook in just a, a matter of 15, 20 minutes. And the nice thing about it, you leave a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan, and you know how Italian families are, you've got spaghetti all day. This will actually stay warm all day long in a very, very low flame. Absolutely delicious spaghetti every time. And over here you've got your new four quart. This will fit down inside as a deep fryer. You know, I have three children, and you take three children to McDonald's, you know, it's the national debt, and they, they don't go for the food, they go for the, for the french fries and the toys, you see. And I got smart one day, so I got the food cutter out, and I got the little one, I showed them how to use the food cutter, and I went out in the garage about an hour later, I come back, and I don't know if you've ever seen five pounds of potatoes cut up, but it's about this high and about this wide. So we filled this pan half full of oil, put the french fries in here, dropped them down inside, and I got the kids doing this. And the nice thing about it, if you teach your children how to cook, McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's can't teach them how to eat. Five or six minutes later, you pull this out. See the little feet on the bottom? 
You put this on a brown paper bag, let it drain, the most delicious French fries you ever had in your life. And see, French fries are not bad for you. It's what you cook them in that's bad for you. Let me show you one other new feature. A lot of you are familiar with our new liquid core electric skillet. Well, we've got a little extra feature that no other cookware has. You can take the 12 quart, put it on top of the electric skillet, and do up to a 17 pound turkey on top of the stove in less than three hours. And there's a lot of other good cooking combinations coming up. You know, minerals and vitamins are water and grease soluble. If you cook your vegetables in water, your meats in grease, you dissolve out the minerals, vitamins, and taste. Even if you just use a little bit of water. Once you go above the boiling temperature, you can smell the vegetables cooking. You're losing the precious minerals and vitamins your body needs to live on. For example, did you ever cook cabbage? The whole neighborhood knows what you're going to have for dinner. What you smell escaping into the air is the phosphorus, the magnesium, the iron, the sulfur. The only thing that left is the gas. So I'm going to show you today how to cook first waterless then greaseless. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cook two or three vegetables in the same pan at the same time. You know, if you bake a potato in the oven, it takes you about 35 to 45 minutes to cook it. Vegetables on top of the stove, frozen or fresh, will take another 25 to 30 minutes. Before you know it, you've got an hour and a half into your dinner and nothing's done. With Healthcraft, you can cook three vegetables on one burner on a medium-low or low flame in just 15 to 25 minutes. For example, I'm going to cook two baked potatoes, broccoli, and some carrots. Now, the only thing you have to do is rinse the vegetables with a little bit of cold water because they dehydrate from harvesting. Then you pour all the water off. Just the water that clings to the vegetables is what you need to cook in. That's waterless cooking. Now, look at the color of this water. That's cold water. Could you imagine what happens if you pressure cook, steam, or boil? All you have to do is pour all the water off Put it on a low or simmer flame with the vent closed, and these vegetables will cook up in just 25 minutes. Here's your vegetables cooked on top of the stove in about 20 to 25 minutes. There's your broccoli. Look at the beautiful bright colors. And look at this. Here's baked potatoes we cooked on top of the stove all the way through in just 20 minutes. That's how simple and easy it is to cook the Healthcraft way. Now, frozen vegetables, you do basically the same thing. Now, normally, they have a lot of moisture on them, so you don't have to rinse them with any water whatsoever. With waterless cooking, it's very important to fill the pan as near the top as possible. And we're going to cook the same way. We're going to cook with the lid on, the vent closed, on a low heat, lower simmer. And those frozen vegetables will cook up in about 10 to 15 minutes. So remember, frozen vegetables, 10 to 15 minutes, and your fresh vegetables will cook in 15 to 25 minutes. Now here's two very important features that you must understand. You'll notice that I've used the right size burner. On the one quart, I have the small burner. On the two quart, I have the little bit larger burner. Now it's very, very important to select the right size burner. Also, you must know how to get the proper cooking temperature. Now that's very simple. I've started both of these pans out on low. If you'll notice this one quart, when I spin the lid, the lid does not spin. On the two quart, the lid spins freely. Now, if you'll notice on my burner here, what I did is I raised from the low position just about an eighth of a turn. Now I know that's where I'm going to cook my waterless vegetables every single time for as long as I own this stove. Every stove does vary, so you need to make this test in your own kitchen. You notice on the two quart right here, you see all the bubbles. That means the heat is too high. That means you have to reduce the heat just slightly enough so you just get the vapor seal. Now, if you happen to pick the lid up and peek while you're cooking, you can't do that with waterless cooking because you break the seal and it just lengthens the time. So you don't have to worry about pot watching, mixing, or stirring. If you do break the seal, here's how to get it back again. Just simply take a little bit of water, pour it around the rim, and you'll notice the lid will actually start to spin freely again when you've reached the right temperature. That's how easy it is to cook waterless the Healthcraft way. As you can see, waterless cooking is relatively simple and easy. However, there's two vegetables that you have to be a little bit careful with, and that's corn on the cob and baked potatoes. Now, corn on the cob can be simply cooked in the husk. Now, the reason you have to be careful with these vegetables, they have starch in them. And when you begin to cook, the starch runs out and it'll scorch the bottom of the pan. Now, if you cook in the husk, you will not have that problem. Now, naturally, potatoes don't have a husk, so we're going to use a piece of paper towel. Just put that in the bottom of the pan, put the potatoes in, rinse them with water, pour the water off, just the water that clings to the potatoes is what you'll cook in. That's waterless cooking. 
Put it on a low flame with the vent closed, and those potatoes will cook in 25 minutes. Corn will cook in 15 to 20. Welcome to this important section on greaseless cooking. Now, the most important thing to remember is anytime you're going to cook chicken, steaks, chops, any kind of red meat or poultry, you always want to start with a hot pan. Fish, meatloaf, or cake, you want to start with a cold pan. All your meats can be cooked on top of the stove in Healthcraft cookware. Now, right now, I'm going to show you how to cook chicken in the liquid core electric skillet. Okay, this section is on pan broiling. What I've done is I preheated the liquid core electric skillet up to about 400 degrees. You can see the control right here. If you're going to cook chicken in one of the conventional skillets, you basically do it the same way. Just start on medium or medium high. Take your chicken, remove the skin, drop it into a hot skillet. No grease, no fat, no butter, no salt. Again, this is called pan broiling. This is the healthiest way to cook your chicken. Now we're going to put the lid on, open the vent, the vent will release the steam so you don't steam the chicken. There'll be no grease to clean up when you're finished cooking and no odors in your hairdo, draper, and furniture. This will cook up in just about 10 or 15 minutes or till the chicken loosens on one side and then we'll flip it over. Now anytime you're going to cook the chicken, steaks, chops, any kind of red meat or poultry, remember you start with a hot pan. Now you notice when you first put the chicken in the pan, it's stuck. Now you can see how easy it is to turn. Now, once you've got it turned, you cook it another four, five, six, seven, eight minutes on the other side, you get the most delicious chicken you've ever had in your life. You cook chicken, steaks, and chops the very same way. Roasting is basically the same as pan broiling in the beginning. What you want to do is preheat the pan, get it good and hot, and drop the roast in the pan and sear it on all sides, just like we've done here. Okay, now once the roast is browned on all sides, what you want to do is you want to put it fat side down. Now you notice I'm using a pretty high heat on this particular method because you want to brown the roast real good. To that, I'm going to add celery and onions. Now what I've done is one onion, two stalks of celery. Lay that around the roast. That'll form your condiment gravy and flavoring. Then you add your whole potatoes. Make sure the potatoes touch the side of the pans for cooking and put your carrots on top of that. Now this is a complete meal that you'll cook on one burner. We're going to put the utility rack on top. I've slightly greased this pan here and we're going to add a cake mix. Now you can use cornbread if you like. We're going to cover this and cook this entire meal. Roast beef, potatoes, carrots, onions, gravy and a cake all on one burner. It cooks 10 minutes to a pound for medium rare. If you like it a little bit more cooked, 11 minutes to a pound for medium and 12 or 13 minutes to a pound for well. Very simple, very easy. This five pound roast will cook in 50 minutes, 10 minutes less than an hour, and you will not get any meat shrinkage. Basically, here's a good guide. Nine minutes a pound is rare, 10 minutes a pound is medium rare, uh, 11 minutes a pound is medium well, and anything over 12 minutes a pound is well done and you get the most delicious roast you've ever had on top of the stove with about this much gravy. This section is on pan frying. Now pan frying in Healthcraft is much the same you would pan fry in other skillets or other pans. The difference here is we're going to use a lot less oil. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you how to cook breaded pork chops. Here we're going to use olive oil. I don't like to use butter because butter is high in cholesterol. Put just a little bit of olive oil in the pan Make sure it gets around to all the different corners. Now you're ready to start cooking. What we're going to do is we're going to have a wet hand and a dry hand. I'm going to use milk because if you use egg, it'll, it'll actually turn uh, black or brown on you. You've got one hand that's wet. This is your dry hand. Put it in the skillet. Let's do it one more time. All right, in your milk. A little bit messy. <laughs> all right, with your wet hand, turn it over. You bread it. Now you do the same thing with fish or chicken, steaks, chops. If you want to bread, this is the way to cook with Healthcraft. But you'll notice we cook with a lot less oil. Look at how beautifully brown we've made this pork chop. Now, you know, we do use a little bit of oil when we bread because if we didn't, it would stick to the pan. But if you'll notice how little oil we did use, there's a great health factor there. And we did use olive oil, which is unsaturated. But look at that beautiful pork chop. You can do the same thing in your own home when you pan fry with Healthcraft cookware. 
Right now, I'm going to show you how to cook a meatloaf on top of the stove. Now, remember what I said? Anytime you're going to cook fish, meatloaf, and cake, you always want to start with a cold pan. Chicken steaks, chops, roast, you start with a hot pan. Here, we've taken one and a half pounds of ground beef, two stalks of celery, one onion, a carrot, and a whole red potato, and we mix them together with saltine crackers, about a half of a uh, package. And after you mix them together, we're going to press them in the pan. Let's take a look. Now, we're going to press this into the pan. It's ready to cook. Put it on a medium-low flame with the vent closed. This meatloaf will cook in anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes. Now, I increased a pound and a half of ground beef to three pounds. Three pounds cook 10 minutes to a pound, 30 minutes on top of the stove. Maximum cooking time. Then you can top it with whatever you like, spaghetti sauce, cream of mushroom soup, your choice. And that's how you cook meatloaf. These are HealthCraft's kitchen helpers. The HealthCraft kitchen machine, the Jetomatic herbal tea brewer and coffee maker, the Cheftel kitchen set of cutlery, and the new liquid core electric skillet by Cheftel. Now we're going to get into each one of these products, but right now we're going to take you to the HealthCraft kitchen machine. You know, HealthCraft started about a decade ago, or a little over a decade ago, with one machine, the old-fashioned three-legged base food process. You might remember that. We actually brought it back into existence. This is the new HealthCraft kitchen machine. Today it weighs about eight pounds. It's not a gadget anymore. It's a kitchen appliance, and it comes apart so it's easy to clean and store. Now, today we put one large suction cup on the bottom. That's a space saver. You put that down on any firm surface, turn the plunger handle from right to left. That locks the machine on in place. The top fits on the base, and then you're ready to go. It has five different cutting cones that come with it. These five cutting cones will do over 240 different cutting operations in the kitchen. It retails for the price of a good toaster oven or pop-up toaster. Yet it'll do the job machine that sells for over $200. Now this is blade number one. See, all your blades are numbered on the bottom. A recipe and instruction book come with it to show you how to use it. When you want your blades on, you simply turn them on. You want them off, they come off. It's safe and easy to use. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself. It's not a meat cutter, it's a food cutter. And if you accidentally get your finger stuck down in here, we do have an automatic stopping device. This hand automatically stops every time. Actually, your fingers don't belong in there. You place your thumb here, your pinky here, use this as a flap. Now, it does come with a protective guard. You can use it if you want. I just choose not to use it. It's still safe and easy to use. Now, we're going to show you some cutting in just a second. I was doing a cooking show one day. A lady came up after the show, bought two of these, and I asked her what impressed her most. She said the graham crackers. So every time she wanted to make graham cracker pies, she put them in a paper bag, whale the dickens at them with a rolling pin, and then roll over them. Well, you never have to do that again. Just run them through the number one blade to get all the graham cracker pie crust, bread crumbs, and cracker crumbs you want at the rate of a gallon a minute. Now you notice I'm just holding the graham crackers very lightly on the top of the machine. If I press down harder, you get big chunks. If you'll notice how nice and fine the cracker crumbs come out, they claim the finer the crumbs, the crispier the crust. Now you can use this for bread crumbs also, so you can make your own bread crumbs in the privacy of your own home. Here's another good money saver. Anytime you buy cheese, always buy it in bulk form. You see, a lot of people buy cheese in little containers. They give you the ends and leftovers, charge you $39 to $1.89 for an ounce, ounce and a quarter. That's six to $35 a pound. I bought this cheese this morning for $3.69 a pound. You get all the cheese you want, as much as you want, it's always fresh. Now, if you'll notice, I'm always cutting from the top of the machine. You see? Now, if I bear down easily, you get a nice fine cut. Now, watch what happens when I press just a little bit harder. See how the cut comes off a little bit stringier, all right? But you'll get a perfect cut every time. Now this is perfect for your uh, grated cheese, for your pastas, spaghettis. Uh, you can even use grated cheese in soup, stews, and spaghetti sauce. This here is a lemon. Now anytime you need lemon, orange, or grapefruit flavoring, all the natural flavoring is right in the skin of the fruit. Just take your lemons, orange, and grapefruits, scuff them on a number one blade, there's no artificial colorings or flavorings. It's all Mother Nature's own. And you see, you can still use the lemon for whatever purpose you bought it for. There's enough lemon for a whole bunch of lemon cookies. Here's something else you can do that's neat. You know, around the holidays, a lot of times, you have uh, butternut squash and pumpkin pies. And if you've never made these from scratch, a pie from scratch, you don't know what you're missing. But if you had to cut and peel this piece right here, it'll take you all day. All you do is place the tough outer covering away from the blade. Now watch closely. This is the only machine in the world that will not only chop your vegetables, it'll peel them all in one operation. Now this is all in the number one blade I'm using. Now if you cook this waterless like we showed you in the first part of the uh, tape, all you have to do is cream this together with a fork, cinnamon, nutmeg, and brown sugar. 
you get the most delicious pie filling you've ever had in your life. And look at this. Anytime you need grated carrots, like, you know, if you have a hard time getting the kids to eat their vegetables, take a carrot, run it through the number one blade, put it between two slices of whole wheat bread, a little bit of honey and, and peanut butter, and the kids will go for it in a real big way. Now, you can also use grated carrot for uh, carrot cakes. Uh, you can use it in soup, stew, spaghetti sauce. We use it as a salad topping. And, and look at this. You know, a lot of people don't eat celery anymore because the tough stringy fibers on the back here get caught in your teeth and gums. If you don't have your own snappers, you know what I'm talking about. Take the tough stringy fibers, place it away from the blade. Notice I'm still cutting from the top. Watch the strings. See how they're coming out the bottom? That's because of the space in there. This will not only chop your celery for tuna fish and egg salad sandwiches, it'll also de-string the celery all in one operation. No other machine will do that. Now that was all done on number one blade. Now you'll notice the whole time we're cutting, there's no juice dripping from the machine. It doesn't crush the vegetable, it cuts it. But look at this. Would you believe from one stalk of celery you get all that juice? You see, the juice of the vegetable is the blood of the vegetable. That's why they say when you peel and boil, you spoil. This is the only machine in the world that will do these kind of cuts. Now this is blade number two. This is a pretty neat blade, and I'm going to show you why I think it's really neat in just a second. But again, when you want your blades on, you simply put them on. You want them off, take them off. They're still safe, simple, and easy to use. First thing I'm going to cut on here is a carrot. Now, almost always you cut from the top. Here, we're going to let the carrot fall into the back, and what you're going to do is you're going to rotate it slightly as you turn the handle. Now see, we're getting a nice, fine julienne cut. Now this is perfect for just about any salad that you can you can actually think of. The thing that I like about the number two blade, it gives you those fancy cuts that you can't get with most, most other food processors. But look what else you can do. If you wanted to do something fancy like let's say with zucchinis, again with the number two blade, just let it sit in the back if you like. All right? Just turn it slightly, this way it won't peel it also. See if I just leave it sitting there, watch what happens to the big chunk of peel that comes out. See how that flipped out? kind of change the cut. That's why you have to rotate it slightly. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You get a perfect cut every time. Now this is what really blade number two was designed for. And that is chopping and peeling onions. Now the first thing you've got to do is prepare the onion properly. You cut the onion from top to bottom, leaving the skins on. You place the skin up away from the blade. Now see the onion is already cut once in the shell the machine is going to do the second cut and peel it at the same time. I want you to watch closely. Watch what happens. Or you'll miss it. You see, there's your chopped onions, there's your peel. Comes out perfect every time. Let me do it one more time for the people in Canada. All right? You notice, cut it from top to bottom. Leave the skins on. Place the skin up away from the blade. Watch closely. You'll miss it. I'm using my fingers as a flap. I got my thumb here, my pinky here. All right? You get a perfect cut every time, and that's how you chop and peel onions with blade number two. This is blade number three. This is the blade that we use primarily for French fries. Again, just turn it on, you're ready to go. Now, the key to this is very simple. Always get long, skinny uh, potatoes. Now, the bigger the potato, the bigger the fries. Some people put their potatoes in here like this, and they get these little stringy, short potatoes. That's not going to work. Lay the potato across. Place your pinky and thumb right here. All right, now watch what happens. Turn the machine, you get McDonald's or Burger King French fries at the rate of a gallon a minute. And that's how simple and easy it is to make French fries with the Healthcraft kitchen machine. Blade four is your slicer blade. It's just a straight blade and it gives you a nice straight cut. Now, the whole thing to remember when you're using this machine is you want to get the blade moving about that fast. You just hold any vegetable firmly. Don't push hard and you'll notice you'll get a perfect cut every time. Now blade four, again, is your slicer cut. Look at how beautiful that comes out. That's great for stir frying. Let's go to blade number five. You know, cabbage is cut once in the shell. So I'm going to show you how to place it in the machine because that's the most important thing. Now, you can also cut lettuce in the food processor, but only cut lettuce in the food processor if you're going to use it right away because if you cut it and let it sit, it bruises it and it's going to turn brown. Cabbage will last a little bit longer. And cabbage is better for you too. So when you take your cabbage, place it in the machine either like this or like this. I always like to use the back side forward and I just cut it on an angle. See, just turn the blade and you get a perfect cut every time. The nice thing about uh, cabbage, it's rich in potassium, magnesium, iron and phosphorus. It's a high fiber food. 
You should eat cabbage two or three times a week. It's a natural laxative, and it's 15 to 40 cents a pound, so it's a good buy. Cucumbers are good too, but don't peel them. You ever notice you eat a peeled cucumber? After a while, it burps up on you. It's coming up looking for the skin that you take, you've taken off. Take your cucumbers, wash them with vinegar and water, and you'll notice I hold it perpendicular to the blade. Even with a soft cucumber like this one, you see I still get a perfect cut every time. You can do the same thing with zucchinis, and we'll top this salad off with a little bit of the carrot, the butternut squash, and the cheese that we cut previously, and there's your harvest salad done right before your eyes in less than a minute. This is the new Cheftel Liquid Core Electric Skillet. When I shake it, sounds like there's water inside. See, there's five plies of surgical steel. In between two of the plies is liquid silicone oil. The heating element is immersed in the oil. The oil in turn heats the pan. So it works just like a deep fryer, only you don't get the grease. And anytime you're going to cook chicken, steaks, chops, any kind of red meat or poultry, always start with a hot pan. Fish, meat, loaf of cake, you'd start with a cold pan. Or let's say baked lasagna, stuffed shells, baked macaroni, you start with a cold pan also. Today we're going to cook chicken the way Weight Watchers recommends or Nutrisystems, and that's without the skin and with no grease. Just take it, drop it into a hot pan, no grease, no fat, no butter, no salt. Now, we're going to cover this in just a minute, but let me show you some of the options you can get with this skillet. The nice thing about this, it works intermittently with some of the other sets. For example, this is the six quart, the bottom half of the Dutch oven roaster from the number two set. You can use this as a high dome cover. Now this is perfect if you're cooking two big oven stuffer chickens or you're cooking a big standing rib roast or something of that nature. You know, a couple of years ago around the holidays, we had a whole bunch of unexpected guests down from the Northeast. You know, when you live in Florida, you always have unexpected guests. So we had a 25 pound turkey in the oven cooking our, our stainless steel turkey roaster, and all of a sudden we found that there was going to be another eight or nine people coming to dinner. So my wife ran out to the grocery store. She picked up a 15-pound frozen turkey, and we cooked it in the electric, uh, electric skillet using the 12-quart from the number five set. You see, and we roasted the whole turkey uh, without even putting it in the oven, not even on top of the stove. The nice thing about the electric skillet, it gives you another pan, you know, especially around the holidays, when you've got six and eight pans and four burners. Now, of course, you know with Healthcraft Cookery, you can do stack cooking. But this just gives you another pan to use, and you can use it for soup, stews, spaghetti sauce, chicken steaks, and chops. This is the lid that comes with the skillet. We're going to cook with the lid on and the vent open. If you'll notice, you'll see the, the vapor escaping. See, when you cook with the lid on and the vent open, that releases the steam so you don't steam the chicken. There'll be no grease to clean up when you're finished cooking, no odors in your hairdo drapery and furniture. Everything stays right inside the pan where it belongs, including your money. You ever cook a five pound meatloaf in the oven, right? You get it out, goes in like a football, comes out like a softball. For every five pounds it shrinks too, you walk in the house, that smells good, you just inhale four dollars worth of meat. When I finish cooking this chicken, it'll come out of the pan exactly the same size as when it went in. Now I'm going to let the chicken cook, but let me tell you a couple of things you can do with this liquid core electric skillet. You know, when I first met my wife, the only thing she knew how to make for dinner is reservations. But today she's a great cook, and this is serious. The, there's over 11 or 12 world famous restaurants here in the Bay Area. As a matter of fact, I live across the street from Chef Tell, a world famous chef. And you know where the best meal in town is? Right here on this block, between our house and his, because we've got the best cook where money can buy. You know, you can be a great chef, but you're going to be only as good as your equipment. It's just like uh, it's just like tools. If you're a carpenter, plumber, mechanic, you've got to have the best tools money can buy. But you know, my wife bakes lasagna on top of the stove in just about 45 to 50 minutes. It's absolutely delicious. You know, one day where uh, she was cooking a meal, she was uh, baking lasagna in the oven and she had two big trays in there and I know we spent like 35 or 40 dollars to, to create these two big trays of lasagna. And I remember, you know, we finished eating that she gave one of the trays completely away. And I thought to myself, I said, why'd you do that? She says, well, you know, it's always easier to make a lot, and you get into it, and you start cooking. I said, well, why don't you cook smaller quantities? And, you know, being Italian, she says, well, it's hard to cook smaller quantities. So I said, well, try the electric skillet. And she did. The most delicious baked lasagna you've ever had in your life. Matter of fact, she's done stuffed shells, baked macaroni, tuna fish casseroles. Uh, not too long ago, did a couple of roast chickens inside the electric skillet using one of the high dome covers. You can also use it for a lot of other different cooking. Soups, stews, spaghetti sauce, chicken, steaks, chops, cakes, and a whole 
bunch of different cooking. So you stay tuned and we're going to show you a very special recipe in just a minute. Here's your chicken cooked to a beautiful crisp golden brown with no grease, no fat, no butter, no salt. You can do the same thing in your own kitchen with the Healthcraft Liquid Core Electric Skillet designed and created by Chef Tell. Hi, this is the Healthcraft Herbal Tea Brewer and Coffee Maker. This is a coffee maker and tea brewer that you've never seen before. First of all, let me show you the inside. It's the only coffee maker and tea maker on the market that's all stainless steel inside and out. No other teapot or coffee pot is made that way. This is the jet pump. The way it works is very simple. It pumps the water over the coffee or tea five to seven times a regular percolator. You can do three cups in three minutes, ten cups in ten minutes. This is the basket. You can see it's configured different than most on the market today. There is a measuring place inside where you can pour the water to whatever desired level you like. Two tea bags. One to two tea bags will give you ten cups of the most delicious tea you've ever had in your life. Two to three scoops of coffee, the most delicious coffee you've ever had in your life. And it even has a special safety feature. The top locks in place. And here's what you get. Here's some coffee we just brewed just a little while ago. Now I use three uh, scoops of coffee because I like it strong. You get the most delicious coffee and tea you've ever had in your life with another American made product from Healthcraft. First of all, number one, you don't cut yourself with a sharp knife, you only cut yourself with a dull knife. With a dull true. knife, you apply too much pressure, the knife goes this because you cut yourself. Right. Also, you can buy a knife, you can buy carbon steel or stainless steel. You buy a carbon steel knife, you get a little steel like this, you get stone, you make it sharp like this. Every time your carbon steel knife cuts an onion, pepper, squash, lemon, uh, pears, apples, your knife gets black and so does your food. Right. So you should buy yeah. a stainless steel knife. Now when you buy a stainless steel knife, you have to spend five more bucks and you have to get a steel with it. This mm -hmm. steel is a much harder steel than this one. And every time you use a knife, you have to make a motion like this, or just like this, or just like this. This motion keeps an edge on your knife all the time. Now when you buy a steel like this, you have to be a little careful. Make sure the steel has those safeguard on it. You go right. like this, you go like this, you lose the thumb, you lose the forefinger. After five days, you have to hold your steel <laughs> like this. So this is a very important feature. Make okay. sure it has those safeguards. Now right. they're waking up at it. Right. Okay? We got now I'm going to show now. you how to cut an onion the proper way. Good. You cut an onion the proper way, you have to take the top of the onion, you peel it down to the root and don't cut the root off. The root holds the onion together. This is the root. Can you see it? I say, can you see it? Yeah. All right, now I know. Then you just cut the onion down like this. Your knife will slice through the onion without cutting through the root and the onion will not fall apart. You make a horizontal cut like this, the onion still doesn't fall apart. And now you just chop it down like this. Beautiful, nice, diced onions. Very nice, very simple, very easy. Goes right over here. Now we're going to slice the tomato. Whatever you want to do, the squash first. Tomato, just going to take this little core out. If you don't want to use the French knife, I'm going to use the French knife for everything. However, we have a nice little paring knife. You can do this very nice, beautiful. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful, nice slicing knife for roast and stuff like this. And for the beginners, they don't cut themselves just a little small right. French knife. You know, just like this. I use the big one. Just going to go down like this, slice it down like this. Very nice, very beautiful, real nice, thin. If your knife is sharp, it will cut through the skin just nice and fantastic. Now, nice. if this rice, of course it's nice. If it's beautiful. Do is chop. <laughs> 18 years ago, I showed you how to cut an onion. Old friends, you know. <laughs> now we're going to take a squash, green squash, yellow squash, slice it down like this. And now comes the most important step. Cut it lengthwise like this, put it down like this. Your knife slides up and down on your knuckle. How about that? If you that? retrieve your knuckle real fast, you make thick slices. Uh -huh. You retrieve it real slowly, you make thin slices. You don't retrieve it, you cut it off. <laughs> so what you do, you go 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the kitchen. You're going to take your gonna squash, you're going to take your knife, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to make a lot of noise. You're going to go like this. Da -da -da -da. Everybody's very impressed and say, what's going on? In case there's no one there, you press, you just cut like this, it goes as fast, it just doesn't make any noise. <laughs> That's how we do it. Goes right over here. Now we're gonna have here some garlic. You know how to do garlic? You take the garlic loaf down, uh -huh. you're gonna take a knife here, boom, bang. Just like this, you see, the skin comes off. How about this that? goes over here, and that's how you peel garlic. Yeah. You want to do this with your processor, it doesn't work this way. That's true. So it we're going to go right along. You're going to take, I mean, just a little, you know. No, that's right. Bit. You have to have different equipment for different jobs. You need both right. things. You that's need right. a knife for certain things, you need a food processor for other things. That's of right. I have both. I work for the company. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But hey, no big deal. You want to do some mushrooms just like this. Take the mushrooms, put them right on here. Very interesting. I did this years ago. One of my chefs said to me, uh -huh. want to do a competition with me? I do mushrooms, you do mushrooms. I said, okay, whoever's done with 10 pounds gets $10. Terrific, he said. He went like this. Sliced it down. 
Then he stopped, got the next mushroom, went like this. Uh -huh. What I did, I just kept the knife going all the time. <laughs> he just put the mushrooms and after five minutes, he went like this. Of that course he lost <laughs> power, just like this. Very nice, very simple, no big That's so, great. That's great. That's great. I noticed, you know, uh, Tell created, uh, he didn't make the knives, but he created it. We looked at many different sets of knives for quite a, quite a long time. We even and looked in Germany. I'm just that, not that's true. We did look in Germany. Yeah. These are American-made. They have rosewood handles, three brass rivets, full tank construction. Full tank, which is very yeah. important. That's how you see it. You have a good balance on your knives. Right. That's very important. You see those. Don't see the, the, the full tank all the way through. It stops here, and it doesn't feel right in your hand. It's that's very right. important. You know, you know what else is nice about these knives? Every single knife has Chef Tell's name on the side. It says Chef Tell Collection by Healthcraft. How about that? Yeah, you know, also says right? it on the right side of the blade, not on the left side. <laughs> then the other night, the left side, you know? So when I chop like this on TV, they can't they can see it. Can't <laughs> okay. Here's some more of Healthcraft's kitchen helpers. This is really something. This is a large turkey roast, all stainless steel. You don't find these around too often. This will hold up to a 12 to 15 pound turkey. And you can cook it on top of the stove or in the oven, whichever you prefer. We also have our uh, blender over here. This is a commercial blender. This was designed and created by Chef Tell for us by the Waring Company. Now the nice thing about this thing, it's a 3 amp. This thing is so powerful to grind whole wheat to a flour to liquefy and blend. Of course we have our 4.8 amp juicer. This is a centrifugal juicer made for us by Waring and our six-piece bakeware. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a little stir fry vegetable very fast, very simple, very easy. What we're going to have is some beautiful, nice broccoli. Just cut the rosettes off like this because the rest you really don't need. Unless you buy my cookbook, you're going to get some beautiful, nice recipes in there how you make a cream of cauliflower out of that. The broccoli and small, tiny rosettes just like this. When you have it done, put it in the bowl. That's where we all keep it. And for our stir fry vegetable, we use the 13 inch stainless steel gourmet pan. Beautiful shape, easy to saute, and just fantastic as I show in a couple of minutes. Now we're going to have some yellow squash here. You cut both ends off. You cut it down like this. You cut it down like this. Then you just slice it down like this. Now as you can see, my knife slides up and down on my knuckle. This way you make beautiful, nice, thin slices. One more time for the people who didn't see it. Very nice, very simple, very easy. Of course, you can do it in a food processor. It takes 15 seconds to run into the machine and 45 minutes to wash it. You might as well just use a knife. Goes right in here also. Very nice, very simple. We have here some celery, just cut the bottom part off, then you cut this part off. This you use for soups and stacks. This also, this you're going to use for your Bloody Marys, very nice. Unless you don't drink, don't use it at all. Now we're going to take that celery, you see this? Just some of the stalks, very nice, healthy vegetable, beautiful, a lot of vitamins, no cholesterol. Just shove it down like this in an angle, you know? If you shove it down in the angle, you really don't have to peel the celery. If you cut it down like this in pieces like this, those pieces are going to be chewy. Then we'll use it like this. Always go an angle like this. This way it's nice and tender and cooks very evenly. You cook for 35 years like I do, you know what it's all about. Just like this, cut this all the way down. When we have the celery done, also goes in the bowl. And after the celery, you're going to use some beautiful, nice yellow peppers. If you don't have any yellow peppers, you can use the green ones or the red ones. They just look a little nicer. The will of vitamins. And then when you clean the pepper, you just cut this down like this. The stem falls off, this falls off, you put your finger in here, you break this out, very nice, just like this. Cut it down like this, cut it down like this, stack it up, and now you have beautiful, nice children of yellow pepper. After the pepper, we're going to take a little onion in there. If you don't like the onion, don't add it in there, it doesn't make any difference. You peel the onion from the top to the bottom, then you cut it down like this, make two slices down like this, and then you just chop it down like this, you see this? Very nice, very simple. This is a big onion, so we don't use all of it, just a little bit. This goes in here also. At last, we get some carrots. The carrots are very nice, because they add a little bit of texture to it. You cut the carrots down like this, then you cut them down like this. You see this? Very nice, and the food processor cannot do this. You only can use this with a knife. And then you just shove them down like this. You want some crunchiness, you want some beautiful color, and some texture. Now I'm going to go to the stove. Use my 13-inch gourmet skillet, stainless steel all the way around, and I show you how to cook it. Okay, now we're going to make the stir-fry vegetable very fast, very simple, very easy. Before we do that, let me talk about the cookware. I could endorse any product I wanted, and I'm a chef for 35 years. I cooked with all parts. This is the best cookware in the world. I'm not saying this because I get endorsement paints. So this is great. It doesn't stick. It's stainless steel, five-ply, easy to clean up, easy to repair, and works all the time. I use it all the time. I designed it. I work with it. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna make the stir fried vegetable. I have a little fresh garlic. This is of course optional. I just like the flavor. Chop it down like this, very nice, very simple. When you have this done, we're gonna take a little olive oil out of right in here, not too much, just a little bit. Then we are take our garlic right in the olive oil. You see, beautiful, nice, it browns a little bit, gives the oil a beautiful flavor. Then we're gonna take our stir fry vegetable, the one we just cut out of right in here. We preheated the pan a little bit. This way, of course, nothing will stick. You see this? It's beautiful. The first time we do this at home, you do it over your sink, of course, you know? Then we add in there a little salt, da 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 little Japanese restaurant, little salt, da 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 just like this. And now we're just gonna cook it. I'm gonna eat this one, thank you very much, and I see you. Hi, you caught me. This is the special dish. See, it's the end of the day, we've had a long, hard day of taping. What I'm doing is I'm doing some buffalo shrimp. Now, taking some shrimp and I'm frying them, or pan frying them in uh, a little bit of margarine. You don't want to use butter, because butter will brown, but that's up to you. You can choose your own. Some people like to use a little bit of olive oil. I like to use the margarine for flavoring, not too much. To that, we're going to add a little bit of soy sauce. I'm sorry, a little bit of hot sauce. It was soy sauce. We just changed the color. No, just kidding, all right? A little bit of uh, uh, seasoned salt, not too much. And here's the secret ingredients. Put a couple of, uh, couple of pinches of breadcrumbs in with this. And uh, this meal is for the crew. This is for all the hard work they've done. And uh, we want to really thank the guys for doing a great job. And thank Healthcraft Cookware for doing the great job it does for us. And I know you'll enjoy it the way we enjoy it. All right? Here's your uh, buffalo shrimp. Look at that. Isn't that delicious? How about it, guys? What do you think? You ready? ready. Here it comes. <laughs> Buffalo shrimp. All right. You know, anytime you're cooking any meat products or eggs or fish, you know, especially the ones we cook here today, the meatloaf, the uh, roast beef, and the roast pork, you know, it's going to be a nightmare to clean. But look at Healthcraft is pretty easy and simple to clean. All you've got to do is take hot soapy water, go around in circles, and you see how easy everything comes right out of the pan. Now, if you do get some stubborn stains, we use a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend or Cameo Stainless Steel Cleaner. Put it in the pan as dry as possible. Make sure you rinse out your sponge so that's dry because this is a slight abrasive. Just go around in circles, rinse with hot water, and the cookware comes out perfect every time. Now, if you're like most Americans, like I am, you can put these in the dishwasher so they're perfectly safe, even the electric skillet. And that's how simple and easy it is to clean Healthcraft cookware. I hope you enjoyed our video cookbook. By the way, I do recommend that you read the recipe and instruction book that comes with your set. And thank you for buying Healthcraft products. You know, all of our products are American made. That means American jobs for America's future. If you have any questions or comments, please write to me directly. Charles Knight, the president of Healthcraft at Box 262502, Tampa, Florida, 33685. If you'd like to purchase any more products, contact your sales representative. And if you have a customer service need, call 813-885-5244. And again, thank you for buying Healthcraft products. We really appreciate it.